Okay, so I'm live again. I messed up the first time. Uh, I'm gonna put timestamps in the description or in the comment. So just skip around to what you wanna see. And this is in Twitch, what I'm gonna upload to YouTube. And, um, let me see if I need to change anything. Uh, no, you know what? I'll just leave it like that. Um, so the first order of business is going to my YouTube. Which we're going to start off covering all the fitness information. So normally if I were a typical YouTuber, I'd break my knowledge up into very small segments and make a whole long video for each like piece of information I have. But I like to give you a more super condensed version of everything so you don't have to like actually watch me regularly. You don't have to like, you know, watch me. But like, obviously this video isn't gonna make the equivalent of like that, like millions of views. All the views over the course of, if I were a regular streamer, or YouTuber, and I made, and each video got thousands of views, this one video won't make the equivalent of like a lifetime of videos paced out better, but, um, maybe one day, I'll, I'll pace it out, and I'll delete, like, maybe one day I'll delete all my smaller videos, and only keep a few up on my channel, because if you go back, that's actually where we're gonna start, oh, wait, what am I doing? That's actually where we're gonna start, where, um, we're gonna go all the way to, to, uh, to this video, I think. Let me open up, wait. Yeah, let me open up this video. I think this is what I need to go over. Um, it's kind of taking me a while to set up because I got to open all these different things later. I got to open open some documents because I I got to go over all this. Because this, this has my information. Um, okay. So... Wait, what happens if I try to raising on? your legs and head and arms. Um, I'll sit. I'll sit it's easy. You just plant either your hands or your fists. Something holding down your legs, and then you curl. Oh, okay. So... With your legs, basically, so, you curl, and it lifts you up. So, this uh, is talking about leg calisthenic yeah, leg extensions. After that, which, calisthenic leg extensions. I can show you that, but it's going to use some muscular experience, I guess. But basically, you just lean back. Uh, yeah, I... Wait, I have to fix. Sorry. I have to fix this audio. Because it's, it's loud in my ears, but it's going to sound quiet in your ears. I need to fix it. I don't want to do a full wrap. But you lean back yeah, so back up. Um, with um leg calisthenics, you can do um with raising your legs and head and arms. Um, yeah, so um sorry, it's hard to talk while I'm listening to myself, especially because I have this nasally voice. But, um, this document here is my ebook, which I'm gonna pull up later. But I had to demonstrate the moves.
Because even though I write out this long paragraph explaining the proper form, it, it's better to have a visual. So, but I'm obviously not doing everything the way you should be doing it because this is without certain equipment that you need like for body weight, body weight equipment, not not like weights. Um, the first move I showed was calisthenic leg curls, which is where you have something weighing down under your ankles, on top of your ankles, not, not under. And you use that to lift your body up with your hamstrings. So the lower half of your leg below your knee is on the floor and everything else goes into the air. You're raising it up. And the calisthenic leg extensions are, they don't need anything to weigh you down because you're weighing yourself down. And you're also on the lower half of your leg under your knees, but you're sitting on it. Instead of lying on your belly, you're, um, you're sitting on your knees and then you lean back. And all your weight goes onto your um, quadriceps and shins if you're using your feet too because your feet curl up your your shins curl up your feet your calves extend your feet and then there are all these moves I don't feel like going over this because I'm gonna have to keep pausing the video I just want to talk like a really long time and go over my books so I'm gonna pull up the documents and I'll I'll leave I guess I'll leave this video and the other video in the comment section. Well, the last video was that video, so. Because I, I also went over different moves there. Um, you know what? You're watch If you're watching this right now, this video is just the very first video on my channel. So either just search filter, um... Search filter sort by they added oldest and then you'll find it and you can watch and skip to here 14 minutes 45 seconds or something so I'm gonna close this because I'm gonna actually just I don't have a script I'm not using text-to-speech like I did in that video the video I just closed but um, I'm going to read out loud from my own top of my head knowledge stuff from my um, ebooks. So here, I'm going to close that and I'm just going to check who's in chat before I open my ebooks. Wait, who's this? I don't know. I I'll just follow whoever. I'll just follow whoever. I'm Mickey Mouse. Wait, are they streaming? They're not streaming, are they? Are they? Oh. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, no, it looks like they're a bot. I don't like bots. You know what? I'll follow them anyway. Gosh dang it. This is taking too long. What's my computer battery at? 85% Oh no Oh dang bro 85% okay Um Go to my discord You can't see this on screen Cause it's not sharing It's not sharing yo Uh, uh, chicken. Uh, okay. Open up my document now. Open up my freaking document. Oh, uh, what the flip flop. 
What the flip flop? It's taking forever. Okay. Enable editing. Jesus. This is taking forever and ever. I just want to present my knowledge. No, don't freeze. I'm not gonna touch you so that you don't freeze. Okay, you, you, it's good now? Is it good now? No, where's my mouse? No, stop it. Stop it, it froze. Okay. Okay, good. Um, now. Go to Word. Or oh, Window Capture. Now go to Word. It doesn't give me the option. Oh, baby! Mickey Mouse is in the house! <laughs> Mickey Mouse is in the house! Okay, so this book, um, I don't need to go over that. Table of contents, I don't need to go over that. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry! Uh, uh. Okay, so ballistics. Wait, do you need to know ballistics? Um, let me think. Uh, so ballistics is a type of power training. Power is strength and speed. So, as opposed to doing hard endurance training or cardio training, or just straight up weightlifting or calisthenics, body weight exercises that don't use any weights or um, resistance bands, resistance training. You use um, explosive exercises, so you use 15 to 90 percent of your one rep max as added weight for an explosive jump or explosive press with your arm, something like that. Um, and you can get really fast with that. And something you can also do that I learned from some random YouTube video is you can go for three to four reps and then stop. Even if you can do more, stop. Because if you stop there, your muscles are still um, not used to the movement. Whatever explosive jump or press or whatever you're doing, pull. So they'll be exerting 100% or close to 100% of their effort. And if you stop there, then just increase the weight and don't, don't do your max reps, which is bad, but if you wanna, if you wanna do that at the end of your workout, then do that at the end maybe, so the first 90% of your workout go until failure and then at the end maybe pick a weight that um you can do more and then stop at three to four reps something like that i don't know um yeah the fitness industry isn't very good because they teach you very little and personal fitness trainers are just trying to make money and if you have a really good coach they'll probably you know give you like coaching and stuff but most like people don't gain a lot of strength after they're already like six or seven years into their training i i still build a lot of muscle and i've been exercising doing strength training since i was in the fifth grade but the thing with me is i didn't know much back then so, um, just remember that, um, most of the content you see, even on YouTube, where they're very intelligent, um, knowledgeable people, 
aren't going to give you that good of advice because a lot of it is repetitive and redundant because they are just trying to make content for a living and if you go out and get a coach or a trainer they're gonna they're gonna take advantage of your newbiness because if you're an advanced more experienced lifter you're not gonna need um, a coach or anything because unless you're going into like competitions and stuff and you need like nutrition and special advice but if you're just like regular person um None of that stuff is going to benefit you. There's Ashley and X on YouTube that a lot of people critique because people don't build strength from listening to his advice, Jeff Cavalier. But his advice is based on science and is actually useful if you tweak it, modify it a bit to make it the right intensity. Um, I used to use the five muscle building principles and three guaranteed muscle building mechanisms to like maximize strongest combination of factors. But nowadays I've gotten so advanced that like intensity, volume are two of the principles, muscle building principles. I, I still know them I think, or I can look them up. It would be real easy to look them up and do a little bit of stuff with them. But um... Uh, so with cardio, and I'll, I'll get back to strength training because this goes in this order. So I'm not going to like bounce around in this document because there's not much time. So all you need to do to reach the cardio that I teach people about where you can run super fast is you start with step aerobics. And step aerobics is when you use a sturdy chair or bench or bench stepper is what they call it and you can see it at some gyms and stuff but you step up on one leg then up on the other leg then back down with the second leg you stepped up on with and then back up with the that same leg and then up on the other leg, the very first leg you stepped up on, and then down. So it it doesn't alternate with with some of it, but overall it does alternate. But th that that step aerobics, all you're doing is stepping up and down on some chair or bench or something. And what that does is it gives you vertical cardio as opposed to running, and that isolates your heart endurance. And you don't need to do that with added weight or ankle, or ankle weights or anything um, when you're first starting out. Just do that until you can do it on a bench or chair height of around one and a half feet if you're short to maybe two feet if you're taller. And then once you can do that without sweating, like for a long period of time, like 30 minutes, then you're ready to do one-legged hopping. And you, you can do bench, uh, you can do step aerobics with a, with like 5 to 10 pound ankle weights or holding dumbbells in your hand. You, you can do that to speed up the process. And then after you don't sweat from it, do one legged hopping. So I can't demonstrate that in here because I'm in my bedroom. But um, I do it all the time in my Twitch streams. So you, you can't hop very far when you're first starting out so because you're not able to move on one leg you're not used to it so once you you keep hopping in a straight line on each leg and you can start to travel some distance then that's good you can stop there and after that you would go back to step aerobics except this time you would jump on the chair sturdy chair or bench stepper and you would jump with added weight holding dumbbells don't do it with ankle weights on because that's that's training a different type of motion it's training your 
leg rotational motion, but you, you want the weight pressing, pulling you down as you're jumping up. So just hold a pair of dumbbells and then jump on the chair bench lever and back down and then jump back up from back down immediately after landing with no pause and that that third jump is what will um, increase your heart endurance there's, there's the box jump which people do and all they do is jump up on a box and then step step down and take a like two second pause and then jump back up and that doesn't do anything for your heart endurance because you're not jumping back up from back down Okay, now I have to skip through some of this. Oh wait, um, to increase your lung capacity, you can um, stretch your diaphragm by arching your back, back and head back, and um, hold, hold your breath while you're doing that, and later you can sprint in place while you're doing that and holding your breath, and that will um, train your diaphragm and lungs. And um, and then uh, yeah. So um, lean muscle mass takes more intensity of strength training to build. It takes about one to seven reps as your max reps for weightlifting, and for body body weight exercises. You can build lean muscle mass up to 15 as your max reps, from 1 to 15 as your max reps for that exercise, whichever exercise. And then 8 to 15 for um, weight training is, or, or, or resistance training, also weight cables, resistance bands. Um, 8 to 15 as your max reps is bulk muscle mass. And basically lean muscle mass is stronger but slower. Um, And then with reflexes, how I train reflexes is I buy this $30 um, package of 100 thin cotton handkerchiefs that are machine washable and dryable, and I throw them up in a ball and it hits the ceiling. And without moving my feet, bouncing around on my feet, I try to catch as many with my hands as I can before they fall the way to the floor. And this helps to catch falling objects, but it doesn't help as much to catch like objects traveling like horizontally, like towards you. Um, oh, and if you see links here, um, don't look for any of these links because I don't know if they're still active or available. Um, and then, uh. This, this up here is what you should do for strength training. So I, I changed this. Um, the best combination for strength training would be to pick, to pick an exercise. I mean to pick a muscle and then find three to four exercises in ascending or descending order of difficulty and do do the hardest one first until failure preferably around 10 to 12 reps as your max reps for and th th this should be all body weight exercises using this strength training technique and then do the next one after a 15 second break the next hardest of the three or four exercises and then take another 15 second break and keep doing that and once you finish all three or four of those exercises, take like maybe an eight to ten minute break and then come back later. So don't do this at the gym. And then just keep repeating it until you're done. The whole gigantic same move the the whole gigantic um uh superset rest pause superset or like eight to ten times or, or ten times and um yeah that that will build like a ton of muscle uh because you you see 
people giving advice on YouTube about how much training intensity and volume to use and the more intensity you use the less volume you get to use because you get tired so this way it uses bodyweight exercises which are um, see let me let me look up something or wait maybe it's in my discord uh, Oh yeah, I have something from my Discord. So, so after you've been building muscle for a while with weight lifting, you can build muscle best around 10 to 12 reps as your max. Six to eight is closer to lean muscle mass. So build muscle as in bulk muscle mass. If you want to build lean muscle mass, then 6 to 8. And I'm reading off of a comment I posted on YouTube that's on my Discord. And then 10, and then 12 to 15, not enough intensity. 10 to 12 is best for size or bulk muscle mass. 3 to 5, not ideal for lean muscle mass because 3 is too low. If your max rep is 3, you won't have done enough volume. Oh, it's from 6 to 8, closer to lean muscle mass. I think 5 to 7 will be best for lean muscle mass. With bodyweight exercises, you can build lean muscle mass from 1 to 15 reps as your max. See, that's what I was saying earlier. So doing 1 to 15 will be equally challenging as 1 to 7 compared to weightlifting. Like if you're doing one-arm push-ups, if you can do 11 to 13, it feels kind of the same as doing 7 bicep curls, sort of. The intensity feels the same. Different muscles, but the intensity you feel. Um, yeah, so with bodyweight exercise, you would do more than 15 for size, like bulk muscle mass, like 16 to 30 reps as your max, or around 30 reps, and for endurance, more than around 30. Calisthenics people don't really talk about rep ranges like bodybuilders. So I'm just guessing. I bet if they do a study, they'll agree. Uh, uh, yeah. One, two. Yeah, so one to 15 is all strength. So eight as your max reps would be ideal for body weight moves. Then 15 to 30 ish for size. So like 22 for size. And 30 through probably 90 is endurance. So take 60 is ideal max reps for endurance by the way training. Yeah, so that's all in a comment I just posted on um, on a YouTube video. And then um, we're going to skip down here. This should still be on my screen, right? Yeah. So this chart is made from my memory of the... Rare chart of max muscular potential, um, which takes your years of experience through your 25th year, and each year it decreases the percentage of your body weight you can build throughout your whole body in lean muscle mass. And your abs and tendons don't build as much strength over time. Their experience is a lower percentage, um, or they have less years. But, like, each year it decreases more. But, um, so, when you multiply these up, you get 15 point something. Like, 25% is a 1.25 times multiplier. But I recently realized you have to subtract 1 from that. Because it starts off 1.25 and then times everything times 1. 1 point this percentage, 1 point that. So when you subtract 1, it's 14 point something. 
So, but it's still pretty much the same. It's still a lot of more so because that means the average testosterone level 100 pound adult male can build that much 100 times 14. So 1400 or so pounds of lean muscle mass if you actually um maximize your training, maximize your potential. And then um and no one's obviously built that much muscle. And then yeah, your abs don't have that much um experience. You have to do special moves to train your abs to get to be really strong. Um And that, that's, I think, covered in the videos that I'll put in the description or something. And then with burning fat, um, you have to not have any sugar in your system while you're doing cardio or whatever training, ab training, because that fat, I mean, sugar will turn into fat. And you'll be burning off that sugar when you work out, as opposed to not having any sugar in you. And then you can burn off the fat calories that that you have and the and the fat on you. Um and then with fingers training, like training your tendons, you can get this like twelve hundred pounds um grip strength trainer from Amazon. And it has these six springs, which each hold 200 pounds of, of grip strength. And if you hold it lower and put the springs higher, it, it makes it a lot harder, like, 200, two, like twice as hard as 1,200 pounds of grip strength. So that, that's the best hand grip strengthener there is. There is something called Captains of Crush. It's a brand for grip strengtheners, but it's not like very good compared to this um, Amazon product. If you just search like 1,200 pounds grip and grip strengthener on Amazon, I, I have one. But um, okay, we're gonna skip some stuff. We're we're gonna skip some stuff because I don't know how much of this is still applicable. Some of my knowledge is outdated and is wrong. Uh, yeah, so the way I was talking about earlier where you find, pick one muscle and find three to four moves and all that, that is the best way to um, strength train. Basically to do any training, strength, size, endurance, I think that's the best. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the best. Because there's a lot of different ways you can do it, but that way combines the best, strongest combination of factors, regardless of what your goal is. So it should be the best. If it's not the best, then it could be that, um, it could be that the rep ranges is wrong, so just change the rep ranges. Um, and then the rest of this looks like moves. I'm gonna skip through all this. Yeah, those are moves. Move stretches. Okay, so that finished the fitness. So now I'm gonna go back to my YouTube and I'm going to. Oh, yellow dogu. Hello. Um, yeah, you have 25 years to build. Your max muscular potential. Um, you have 25 years to. Um, you can still build most of your muscle before that though. Because the 25th year is only like 
Um, 0.5% of your body weight. I don't know if Yellow Doku is still here. But if you're still here, yeah. My war document shows my name, Blanca. Oh, well, they can see that. That's okay for people to see. Um, sorry if I'm not reading chat much. Okay, so basically I have really good personal development because I, um, I, I invented some techniques to use for different things. So, within personal development, right, there are these motivational speakers and these um is everyone's max different uh wait yes everyone's max is different it depends on your testosterone levels which there's testosterone and then free testosterone and free testosterone is what you can use to build muscle and there's also what what is it called um there's also a hormone, yeah, it's called myostatin. There's a chemical called myostatin, and it limits how much muscle you can build. So, the more myostatin you can have, the less muscle you can build. So, there's some people with very low myostatin, so they can build more muscle. Like, if you look up this guy, I'll type his name in the chat, Eddie Hall. He's really strong because... He has really low myostatin. Um, I took a blood test and I have extremely low um, free testosterone. I'm like so close to below the normal human range for a male. So that explains why I don't put on a lot of muscle. Even though um, I train really hard. Uh, but with personal development. I don't teach people to like motivate them or to like get people who are doing really bad to then become good. I'm trying to do personal development for people who are already like established in life and then get them to like surpass that. So a lot of people go to personal development because they have a lot of problems but there's no personal development for people who are already like good in life and who need to like achieve more so um where it starts off in my personal development is what i call layman's perfect which is not per per perfect like perfection but it's it's layman's like they don't have much imperfections like it's here um so things that don't count against you or like if you have an excuse or like it's not um it's not really detrimental to your character or like your your ethics or your like if you just have like something slight about you then I, I don't consider like an imperfection like people are always saying not nothing is perfect or nobody's perfect but I like to say that you can consider something close to perfect if there's like limited um, bad stuff about the person. Uh, so that pretty much sums it up. And then what I consider perfect, I don't just call it perfect or perfection. I call it perfect most ideal possible because I like to think like the most ideal it could possibly be. And when I talk about it, I use different metrics of intelligence than other people are using. So one of them is just pure analytical reasoning ability. Another is existentialism, which is a type of intelligence in a psychologist theory. It's Howard Gardner's uh, multiple intelligences theory. And his theory is that there are nine types of intelligence and existentialism is the one where you learn from experiences so as opposed to learning from being taught stuff you teach yourself from 
like extrapolating knowledge from experiences. So, and another type of intelligence would just be like accumulating, com compiling like large sums of miscellaneous information that's like practical knowledge. So those three types of intelligence are what I use to like characterize things. Um, I find them more useful than like IQ or like what is it called crystallized intelligence. Th there's new types of intelligence coming out in psychology these days that talk about like crystallized intelligence and fluid intelligence or something. I forget what they're called, but. Um, people don't think existentialism is necessarily like, oh, you were in ads. Oh, I was just talking about, um, the different types of intelligence that I characterize things with. And one of them is existentialism, which is, um, where you learn from experiences, like extrapolating knowledge discoveries from your experiences. And I was saying people won't, won't um, use that because they, they think like it's outdated and stuff. And they don't see how people can, can actually extrapolate much discoveries that way. Because usually you can't really just discover stuff. But I've made a lot of discoveries that other people have made and I've made better versions of them. Like there's this, um, I think, uh, 20th century um, German philosopher named Friedrich, Friedrich Nietzsche. And he's like basically the world's best um, philosopher uh, like, theorist, and one of his topics he teaches about when he was still alive is utopia, and I heard utopia while watching a movie or something, and I immediately came up with, like, the right version of utopia to, to implement into society, and that's, that's, um, that's in my personal development book here. Uh, some of this isn't necessary to, to, to summarize. Um, oh, but before I get to Utopia, so with addiction, uh, you can stop eating foods that you crave. And oh, hey Detroit for Life 13. Oh, I'm uh, going over my, my knowledge, all my knowledge. It's like a marathon, but I only have like an hour and a half to do it, which is kind of lame. But this computer overheats when I try to charge it, so I'm not going to try to charge it to save battery to, to add more time. Um, but um, if you stop eating foods you're addicted to, you'll stop craving them, and then you won't be addicted to them. And you can also get bored of stuff by doing it really long like video games and then not buying more video games and then um with like other types of addiction that have a chemical dependency you can slowly lower the dosage and then completely go off of it at some point and that should get rid of the withdrawal symptoms somewhat if it's like drugs not if it's like a prescribed medication, then, then you should stay on it. Um, and then with other types of addiction, you can also, um, and knowing that it's bad for you, like obviously you're trying to stop, um, become accustomed to the highest level of temptation so that you're immune to all lower levels of temptation. And that can apply to a lot of stuff actually. But, also, um, some of this stuff isn't necessary to read also. And with um, reading, uh, you can speed read by thinking the words you're reading. So, you, um, 
you can read as fast as you can think words in your head not out loud but reading in your head and then um so you it's only limited by how fast your eyes can move so as opposed to reading with your finger this is activating like full reading with your finger because you read with your finger but you don't always think the words that, that's why it makes it faster when you read with your finger um because i i read this book on speed reading and i i didn't know anything about speed reading and all it said is to read with your finger and this was in the fifth grade so i did this presentation to my class but I had only read like the first 30 something pages of the book and so all I knew is that you read with your finger and later on in the school year my teacher like whispered into my ear something about thinking the words you're reading but I I've heard this from multiple sources now I've heard from that teacher I've heard from Markiplier on YouTube in one of his Una's Honest videos before they took down that channel and I heard from a random like video on YouTube that my mom was watching. So this is like an official speed reading technique. In the YouTube video my mom was watching, it was like an old an old man talking. And it was like an old an old an old school video. But like um what else do I have? Uh oh yeah and typing is when you like press type in words is like a series of keys so if you practice typing with random letters in the typing software it it makes your typing speed faster but when you actually type like words in your language you you memorize that series of keys because you type these words so many times so then when you have to type something you've never typed before then it's a lot slower um and then, uh, and then, so I'm gonna skip around some. Oh yeah, and then with learning, um, one way to help memorize stuff faster is take a second copy of whatever thing you're trying to memorize, and take a second copy and look back and forth between one sheet of paper and the other or one half of your computer screen and the other and that way you can double the 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 learning time because in between the screens or sheets of paper um you can practice reciting them in your head and then when you see it on the the left or right again then that that is reading it a second time so I like to make two or three copies of it and then do that um, that way you read it over and over way faster um, and if you have a textbook you might want to buy like a study guide book as well because not all textbooks teach very well and then um, with like math um uh w with math you need to understand the formula if you want to memorize it faster or you could just memorize the formula without understanding the math but to to do well in like practice questions you don't have to practice like every single question what what works better is memorizing the series of steps needed to solve different types of math and science problems especially with science like in physics there's a lot of word problems and if you don't know how to use the formula to solve that problem then even if you know how to use the formula you don't know how to solve different types of scenarios in like physics like like saying a pulley lifts this and then it drags this and then this rotational force applied to this and then this linear force and then what's the power what's the force applied to this and then how much power was used and then what's the momentum of like something crazy like that requires a lot of um strategy to
to to know um, how to solve the problem and teachers don't teach you in physics classes like that how to solve different types of problems so you would have to like create problems for yourself to use like they might not be in your textbook actually they might not um as you can create a lot of unique physics problems and other other signs aren't quite as hard as physics if you have like chemistry then then yeah memorizing the series of steps to solve different problems will probably work for chemistry um and probably biology uh and then english requires english and history require more memorization than math and science because there are all these dates and times and events and paragraphs you have to memorize so um and then with parenting um the only time you should yell with your kids is like when they're five and stuff after they're five you shouldn't have to yell at them because if you don't raise your kids to like be obedient by the time they're five then they're gonna stay that way like if you if your kid is 10 then and they're rude and stuff they're not gonna change by the time they they're 11 or 12 so when they're really young is when you have to be hard on them. A, a lot of parents love their kids like, um, like, murmur and stuff, and like, mumble when they're like young. But when, like, they're still a toddler, like three, four, and then later five, you have to, like, um, you. You, you can't let them, like, jump around when they're walking around holding your hand and, like, and, like, run around and act crazy and, like, um, not have manners. I know people think that kids shouldn't know, like, how to behave until they're, like, older. But, like, when I was five, I was pretty damn mature. Um... Uh, I I just had a bad kindergarten teacher, so she didn't really acknowledge that I was smart until like the the school year was over, um, and I did a few dumb things in kindergarten, but besides from those things, I was good, um, cause cause it cause everyone when they're younger likes to do a few a few dumb things just to experiment with stuff. But, um, yeah, so you have to yell at your kids, you have to discipline them so they have common sense around, around four or five years old. And then, when they're older, you have to teach them some stuff. You, you have to give them, like, knowledge and practice for life and, like, adult things. Um, in case, like, you die or something, you want your kid to be ready. And then... And then you want to have good interactions with them. So a lot of parents like don't know how to talk to their kids. Or a lot of parents have problems communicating with their kids because they're just different generations or whatever. But this should be less difficult if... um. If you have money, because if you have money, um, everything else is already good. Um, like, you're able to provide for their needs. Uh, and then... Oh, th there's a personality test I took called the Hexaco Personality Test, and it's free. Hexaco, like, um... I'll, I'll type it in the chat. Mexico personality test. And it's, um... 
it, it measures 26 categories of personality like traits and it's um it's like considered the best personality test like better than Myers Briggs and other stuff and this test um like personality determines a lot of things because apparently being a psychopath doesn't have to have like brain chemistry um violations like you could be a psychopath but your brain is still normal sort of it won't be completely normal but it is it is to blame on your personality because it's like empathy and stuff so but I don't know exactly about it um and then with teaching I like to teach with something longer than a study guide but way shorter than a teacher's lecture slides so if you had to teach someone algebra one and you only had a week you would go over you know equations like linear equations in one day part of one day you, you, like you would teach them the pre-algebra stuff um where it's like doing this operation on both sides of the equal sign that that wouldn't take that long so you would have time to also teach them like maybe recursive and explicit um equations and then when you have to teach them like quadratic equations maybe that would take like one full day like you wouldn't teach them with an example you would give them the formula and then break down the formula and then explain to them the series of steps to solve different types of math problems and then the reason it takes like a whole year in middle school to teach that is because when they go over like quadratic equations for example they'll spend like each day covering one small sub subsection of quadratic equations like there's there's um there's factoring there's completing the square there's using the determinant i, I don't remember all of them because and i don't take much math anymore in college but um you can teach all of that in like one session pretty much and then the next session can be something else and then um uh So, um, there's a category in my book about nuances, but I want to explain something a little different. So, there's analysis that you can do in real everyday life. Like, if we're talking about just having a conversation, wait, and then what? Oh, I was talking about, um, uh analysis now oh but the personality test is just that's the best personality test but but with analysis what i'm trying to say next is um you can analyze stuff and and like in, in everyday just regular conversation that a lot of people if 
if the, if that's a, they're a really brilliant, smart person in their field, in like science, medicine, psychology, or something. I don't know. But in everyday life, they don't they don't look outside of the window in everyday life and like analyze stuff in everyday life. They only do that for their job. So people aren't as aren't as creative, especially older people, and. I'm not saying like making discoveries, but like maybe you have some problem that day and you're talking to your parent about it and maybe it's about school, let's just say it's about school, let's say you ran into some problems in school and you're analyzing it, but not everyone analyzes stuff like that. So I just consider that a valuable skill, like one of the skills that they say is most valuable in like office worker jobs is the ability to think the ability to prioritize and the ability to think and when they say the ability to think they don't just mean like thinking like thinking words they mean like coming up with like big ideas and using using a lot of analysis and stuff so um and Part of that is being able to analyze stuff that normally you wouldn't make anything of it. And another part of it is, um, oh wait, that's the end of my book. But there's no utopia. What was what, the utopia part? Okay, so I have to go off this based on memory. Wait, I'm looking for my, um, table of contents. I guess it's not here. I don't know where I put it, um, but, uh, so, Utopia, in one version, is the version where it's not, um, it's not a perfect Utopia, and, and so, only the societal structure has changed, and people in that society are not all perfect. There's still plenty of people with imperfections. So in, in this version, and, and this is a partial utopia too, so the societal structure isn't even perfect. So the societal structure has improved, but the people still have imperfections and everything else is the same. So in, in this version, and there are a few different versions, but in this version, you would make schools and different parts of life have requirements by law. So you would set requirements on parenting, on schools, on jobs, on different walks of life, areas of life and society, and people would not have complete freedom of will. Um, you would still have freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly. You would have all the same things there would just be simple requirements to ensure that like a serial killer isn't becoming a parent or somebody who's really poor isn't becoming a parent or like schools are teaching kids like practical knowledge and not teaching like the same things over and over like for instance right now kids learn some of the same things in elementary school that they have to learn later in statistics in college or they're learning things that aren't applicable to like real life and they're also um they're also underestimating what younger kids have potential to understand like if it's taught properly you could understand calculus earlier than college and there would also be better police system so police would be trained with psych psychology and psychoanalysis and there would be more surveillance cameras to the extent that in worse neighborhoods you would be able to catch criminals faster and there would be 
a better system around crime, like prisons, you wouldn't just send someone to prison right away. There would be a reform system. And another part of the utopia is um, in hospitals. They would not just um, experiment with medications the whole time. In hospitals and in, in healthcare and stuff, they would um, they would do a better job diagnosing your condition. And th there's a lot of other things that would go into utopia. Um, the the Democrats and Republicans, the past 15 years, have been arguing over this stuff. So some of the stuff I'm saying they might have suggested, but they can't agree on anything. And that's not to go into politics or anything, but the politicians can't agree on anything. And then, um, so that's the end of that book. And then I have one more book, or part of one more book, if I can find it. It's my original book. Oh, I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. So this is my original, um, first final draft. I have many final drafts. Um, oh, so this is my miscellaneous info. Yeah. So... This is the third book, and this is all just random miscellaneous info. So this is one of my favorite books. I actually like this more than the personal development book, because this is just fun to write about. But, um, so there are these YouTube actors, and they have a lot of money, and that's, that's basically sums up that. And then... Oh wait, I already went over my addiction framework. And then... And then, yeah. So, there's some adults who are, um, really attractive as kids. And then, as adults, they get, like, ugly. Wait, wh why is my computer frozen? God dang. Um... And then, uh... Oh wait, I have to skip this. I'll get back to it later about aliens um wait let me type in the chat to remind myself aliens get back to that from remind oh dang it remind me later okay and then with appliances um frigidaire and whirlpool are like good uh Refrigerator and freezer brands. And then bad people doesn't just mean like criminals. Like, it can also mean like people with bad personality and morals. Uh, and then with baking mix, um, you can get baking mix from Amazon and then add water and microwave it. And you don't have to bake with eggs. You can add water or milk the baking mix, whatever mix you made, powder, and then microwave it. And you want to evenly mix the water in with the powder. And if you're making like a protein muffin mix, baking mix, the protein muffins have eggs in them. So like, um, like those protein muffins, like organic and stuff, you have to uh, mix the water um, very evenly and mix water in with each like bit of powder otherwise when you eat it it's gonna destroy your muscle mass like it the egg is is um in there and it will um eat at your muscle mass like you'll lose muscle from from eating it because of the eggs um because it's it's been in there and it's shipped and in the store 
on the store rack shelf and then you buy it like it's old and then with bar dips you can do straight bar dips instead of side bar dips and it works it still works good um it's easier but it still works good like that's how you do one arm straight bar dips you can't do them on the side with a one arm dip you'll like have to lean over and it'll be bad for your back and then there's like underground music on spotify and youtube there's um one youtube channel called Cirex, which is the chemical name for salt i don't know why they call themselves Cirex, but um that channel isn't underground but and music is underground and music has nightcore um eurobeat and there's also um there's also playlists on spotify that i favorited and liked and i put some of their songs in my playlist and it's like this playlist of like all underground unknown underrated songs and it has some that i've heard like soju sammy play even though he banned me on twitch but he played some of them on his streams and then with bo which this has happened to me before sadly but if you have sweat in a shirt that's like nylon elastane um spandex um those materials will um like heat up when you wash and dry your shirt in the washing drying machine and then it'll like have a permanent like smell in it so you have to like put on extra deodorant because if it's not cotton if it's not a cotton shirt then it'll have like possibly um smell sealing in it and then um if you remove the brakes from a car obviously it can keep going faster but also um if you run down the stairs without without like resisting each stair step then you can go faster yeah that's that's good um and then these are some uh uh, browser extensions Transover translates into different languages from different languages and then and then um oh and then where's the other one Cooper do I have it I don't have it um let me look it up wait I'll just type it into chat there's a browser extension for coupons like honey but nobody mentions it in like youtube um sponsors but it's called cooper wait oh dang it the window capture isn't on the right window Okay, and then I'm um, I'm approaching done with this um ebook, and I gotta piss. Actually, I'll piss now. Okay, I'm back. Um, I last left off at Cooper. And then, um, so you can ferment raw vegetables. And what happens is their nutrients multiplies like hundreds 
of times to thousands of times if you ferment them for like several months and doing that like you you can look it up to like farmers and people on youtube and they ferment like raw um broccoli sprouts and garlic and um radishes and carrots i mean you can ferment any vegetable pretty much they ferment foods to make them last longer to store them but when you do it to vegetables because they're healthy already then um it gets rid of their bad bacteria because when you store it that long if it has bacteria it'll grow bad so when you ferment it you leave it out in a cool dry place and then apparently my mom says because she does it i don't know exactly how you do it but then you put it in the fridge after like 12 days or something and then you leave it in there and eating raw fermented garlic has cured some of my radiation damage because i got it from my phone like when your phone is brand new and it has that microwave radiation it it can mess up like for guys their ball sack will get radiation damage like that actually happened to me like so many times and so something else happened and i'll explain later it has to do with aliens but i won't get to that until later but um raw fermented garlic cured my covid when i got the pfizer vaccine and i got the second shot and i was sick for like three or four days and most people are sick for like three weeks when they get that shot um and then with um with cancer you can um eat organic foods and you can also um there's also like apparently herbal supplements out there that lengthen your telomeres and your telomeres are in your dna where they would hold your dna and they shorten and that shortening of your length of your telomeres is responsible for aging so if you um don't want to age as fast there's like herbal supplements you can eat to prevent that but I didn't watch the full video. It was in an ad on a YouTube video. And then with the caramelized Christopher ties, there's um there's like a way to Christopher ties your food where if you have leftovers and it's mixed with like a little bit of saliva, a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of like um mashed up food and you microwave it it's gonna heat up with the fat and the juicy meat and it'll like crispitize and then you'll get like this um really caramelized meat and it has to have fat in the meat um but yeah and then with chain reaction significance this is what i mean by significance so let's say you're in a big classroom and you start talking and then suddenly everyone else starts talking that's like a chain reaction i call it a chain reaction significance the, the significance of that because a lot of times you're in a room or a building and you start doing something and it like sparks off like a bunch of other people doing stuff and like um a lot of books actually aren't that hard to read because like war and peace for example people like think it's so hard because it's long but some versions of it actually don't have that much advanced vocabulary um so like you can read it if you actually attempt and then there's like flows on non-traditional sites like amazon and aliexpress and like they're good quality but the thing is people buy their clothes from brand names and sometimes they're overpriced because of like retail upscale pricing but um uh like for jackets for instance there's um 
well, I only know for men's jackets, so I won't say. Uh, and then with computers, um, there's this, uh, wait, I forget the name of it. It's on eBay. There's a place that sells computers on eBay, like desktop computers. And then, um, some computers overheat, like gaming laptops nowadays, except for, I think, the Lenovo Legion and the HP Pavilion gaming laptop. The, the Pavilion might overheat, I'm not sure, but I think the Lenovo Legion doesn't. Um, and then, oh, and then, if your computer is hacked, you can unhack it by shutting it down and unplugging the charging cord from the outlet. But only unplug from the outlet. If you unplug the charging cord from your computer port, then electricity is still flowing in your computer. Because when you unplug from the outlet, what happens is, like, if if um, in my room I have noisemakers and there's a charging cord, right, plugged into the outlet. So if I go and rub the charging cord with my fingers, take my hands and rub it, all the static electricity will go into my hands. So I can actually artificially turn off my noisemaker by removing all electrical current flowing into it. Um, and that's also because it's old. But basically my point is that um, when you have a computer charging cord, there's kinetic electricity flowing into it. But, um, it has something to do with the static electricity. Like, you'll, you'll cut it off by unplugging from the outlet. I forget how it goes. But, um... Oh, wait. No, don't freeze. Don't freeze, computer. No. Okay. Uh, oh. And apparently, grilling meat makes it taste better than stir frying and tea at fast food restaurants apparently isn't maintained well because the tea brewer buckets aren't washed a lot and then with deodorant you can use old spice but old spice has chemicals in it so one of the chemicals is like blue dye and it can make you hyperactive and arm and hammer Eucalyptus and rosemary deodorant is good for all genders. And, um. And, um, when you use deodorant, uh, if you have water in your armpit and it gets in the deodorant, then it can soak through to the bottom of the stick and the deodorant won't smell as good. So you want to wipe off your stick. And I always use deodorant on a clean armpit. I don't put it on dirty armpits. Because then it gets messed up. I want my steak to stay clean. And then with drinking sides balancing, if you hold your water cup on your, your dominant hand, you should occasionally drink with your non-dominant hand. Because what happens is the cup is on the side of that hand more. So if I drink with my right hand, the cup is closer to the right side of my mouth. So it goes down a different side of my throat more than the other side. Um, and then with earbuds, um, wait, wait, I don't know what to cover with earbuds. And then, uh, Oh yeah, so with your eyes, um, there's a few things. So, if you look at a light that's bright enough to keep you awake, but not bright enough to wake you up all the way, and it has blue light, like it's a white light, not a yellow or orange or red light, if it's a white color dim light, and it's solid, it doesn't have like, smaller lights within it, um, that type of light, can give you chronic insomnia 
if you stare into it when you're super duper tired and something's blocking you from being able to fall asleep. So that can give you chronic insomnia. It's it's complicated. Maybe I maybe I overcomplicated, but and then also with eyes, you can get eye floaters, which is bacteria in your eyes, from looking at a certain type of light. It's a certain type of light, like, imagine a reading light, where there are all these tiny nodules of light, and when you take off your glasses, if you have nearsighted vision, you have to have all of this for it to work that way. You have to have nearsighted vision and take off your glasses, and you're completely blind at this point. And then you look into the light, and you can see all the little molecules in your eyes moving around, all the little tiny particles, not not molecules, but like tiny strands of like amoebas and bacteria and whatever, and those little things will grow, because now they can see themselves, because you can see them, so they know how to multiply now, so then they're going to multiply within the surface of your eyes. And that's how I got eye floaters, but it's very slight, um, it's very slight what I have, uh, but then with eye moisturization, um, if you get soap into your eyes, soap is a pH above 7, soap is basic, so you need to put something acidic into your eyes, like vitamin C water, or lemon water, or orange juice, and then with um with file converters uh there are different file converters you can use for free and if you want to upscale an image you can put it into a video editing software like cyberlink power director and cyberlink power director i found to be the best free video editor for a computer that's not that strong with a graphics card and cyberlink power director um can do a 4k video edit that's like a long video in like i think four hours at the fastest if you have like a mid-range gpu like a gtx 1650 um and that's the fastest, it could still take like 16 hours, because nobody edits in 4K, unless you're like a big YouTuber, but um, and so you can put an image in there to upscale it, and just make a 5 second video, and render it for 5 seconds, it, it'll take longer than 5 seconds, but render a 5 second video of the image, and then you can pause the video and right click and save the image file. Instead of trying to use um, file, I mean image upscalers to do it, you can do it that way. Um, uh, Oh yeah, chocolate flavored things um, are t taste best at room temperature. Chocolate tastes best at room temperature. And then other things taste best at different temperature. There's a different best temperature to eat things for the flavor. And then when you fan stuff, um, you can get a towel and rotate it. And that way... It, um, it, it's better than fanning, like, vertically, like, or horizontally, because you can rotate it, and then it, it fans better, um, if you're fanning something. And then, with genetics, um, if you, oh, oh, bye, yellow dog, Um, with genetics, um, every gene, like, could be a different trait, so, if only 1% of your genes, like, Pokimane, is 1% Asian, or something, I think 1 or 2%, then, um, according to a DNA test, 
then um you could still have your appearance be completely um one ethnicity just from a small percentage of your genes and then um with glasses um if you get a glasses frame that's made out of metal and it's like a metal wire frame apparently according to electro crisis even though he banned me but he learned this from it's got but apparently it's better for eye pressure like it doesn't strain your eyes as much something like that um i personally like to wear glasses that fit tighter so that it doesn't fall off my face because i always adjust my glasses so i like to wear the kind that is plastic like acetate plastic not like cheap plastic and then it has to have arm pieces that um have resistance so when i try to close them together like taking off my glasses and close them it has resistance when i when i close and open them and um there's also carbon fiber glasses which can be expensive unless you buy from like zenny which is a budget online glasses frame site and they can even put lens but it's cheap plastic lens into your frame like prescription but you still need to get an eye exam and get your like numbers and data um like your um prescription data and other stuff but with carbon fiber it's hard on your ears after you wear it for a few days so you probably won't like last unless your ears are like harder than normal like it hurts my ears but um uh and also um using like glycerine and harsh toothpaste can kill a lot of your good bacteria in your mouth so there's like lighter mouth mouthwash and there's better toothpaste than like arm and hammer toothpaste i don't really know people who use arm and hammer toothpaste it's just i used to use it and it killed a lot of my good bacteria so i, I got this illness where then my gut didn't have enough good bacteria so i was like having bad bacteria overgrowth um and then uh Apparently it's good to play with soil outside and dirt because it has good bacteria but um There's a lot of bugs outside though. I don't think they should advise people to do that Because who has a like good outdoorsy area where you can actually do that? Um some of this I have to skip because I don't know how to cover it honestly some of it I do know how to cover. Like this, like with nachos. Someone told me this is just cheesy potato chips. Because how I make nachos is I don't use tortilla chips and liquid cheese. I use shredded cheese and potato chips. Or like Doritos. Like the cool ranch flavor. And I put the chips in the bowl. And then I put the cheese on it. And then I microwave it. And like it tastes so good. I don't know why they make nachos with um liquid cheese and tortilla chips. Like and I don't know what these people meant when they when they called my version of nachos cheesy potato chips. I don't know what they meant. Um but there's this noise maker, right? And it's really good. I have it in my room right now. And it's like the best noise maker. And it's always um out of stock. And noisemakers like make like that white noise that um drowns out the sounds in your room so you can sleep better. And I've always used noisemakers um since I was little. Uh and then with operating systems, there's like Windows, Mac, 
and Linux. And Linux has Android, but there's also other versions of Linux. Like one version of Linux that I use is called Ubuntu. And it's like the most common version where you can set up your Wi-Fi easily. You don't have to like know the programming language of the operating system. Like in the command prompt and stuff, you can just enter your Wi-Fi and password and connect. And um, with Ubuntu, it runs like, I would say two to three times lighter on your hardware. So you can salvage an old computer to make it last longer. You just need to watch some tutorial videos and maybe back up your data on like maybe a, maybe a flash drive. Like buy, um, you can buy, um, uh, you can buy a, like, 256 gigabyte flash drive from Wish for like cheap and then save your files on it. You probably won't be able to save your um, entire operating system like your your software and everything but your files you'll, you'll be able to save. Actually on Wish you can get a 2 terabyte um, flash drive for cheap too. But um, with Ubuntu there's a bunch of tutorials and it's very complicated how to install it. So sometimes people give you, like people give you them creds, the credit, if you install it, cause it's hard. But it's actually not that hard. Um, and then, um, and then with shoes, um, I'm still trying to figure out what's the best combination of shoes to run fast. But it's either Brooks, that that brand, or it's Asics, which is another brand, but with but both with um Power Step uh shoe inserts. Because Power Step has the best cushion out of like all the shoe inserts that there are. So So um like Air Jordan isn't right to run in because it's not like it doesn't bend enough. Oh wait, wait! Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah, and then. Uh, usually people sleep for 90 minutes and then they wake up or they continue sleeping but that's why um, you get into your deep REM sleep in the middle of your sleep cycle and then with washing bottles if it's just plastic you don't need to use much soap unless, you, unless it's dirty because if you use too much soap the, the cup will get too soapy and then with um With workout gloves, they can still give you calluses, even if they're like good workout gloves. So you have to get um like soft uh, fabric gloves to, to do um exercises with. Like get winter gloves or get um barbecue cooking heat resistant gloves from Amazon, and then um and then there are these other stuff. Uh, uh oh baby Oh yeah <gasps> <gasps> Oh yeah, wait, I'm skipping too fast. You can get free video hosting. Um... Wait. Wow. 
What the? What the heck? Wait, I'll... I'll send the rest later. Wait! Wait, no! Oh, baby! Wait, let me enter this before my computer shuts down. Go free host. Last... Last, um... Website... Maker... Website... Okay. Now I'm done! Now I'm done! Yay! Oh, baby! See you next time! I will see you next time! Now I'm done! Now I'm done! Yeah! <laughs> oh, baby! See you next time! I will see you next time! Now I'm done! Now I'm done! Yeah! <laughs>